where we're staying. We're on the roof of the hotel now, the marvellous view of uh, Naples. 75 degrees today, lovely and warm. Well, we arrived last night from London and we've just had breakfast and we've come on the roof to see this incredible view. And there, my friends, is Vesuvius. What's the name of this square here? Uh, that is Piazza Municipio, uh, Municipal Square. Pretty though. Mm. I like the idea of the four fountains. Very green. That's the Castel Nuovo, the new castle. Must have seemed a good idea when they built it many hundreds of years ago, but not quite such a good name now. And if you just show the cars, Mark, at the base, that's where the moat was. The river would have filled it. Now there's no moat. It's just it's a kind of car park, isn't it? Time to go and see this amazing, vibrant city. Yeah, let's go. I'm doing an Anita. <laughs> Hey, the pool's behind you. Well, we've arrived in the great courtyard inside the uh, Castel Nuovo, just as all the school kids hopefully are on their way out. Hence the noise at the moment, reverberating around. You see the age of the building. So this is where the uh, city council meets. What's amazing is what's above their head though, if you go up, way up, I don't know, it must be a hundred foot up. It's a beautiful vaulted ceiling in the shape of an umbrella. This is the main chapel. Another high ceiling. Some frescoes from the 14th century. Madonna con Bambino, but you'll see probably millions of in Italy. Oh look, there's another one, Madonna con Bambino. Hello baby. one of the original bronze doors of the castle. Uh, it's a bit the worse for wear, it's a few holes. Yeah, can you see the cannonball there, Mark? Yes, it's come straight through the door. Look at that, it's still embedded on the outside. Lots of battles here between the French and the Spanish. And the Italian, of course. Oh, yes. Children have gone and peace has returned to the castle courtyard. Well, luckily for Naples, the volcano, when it exploded in AD 79, exploded away from Naples. Pompeii's the other side of it, so they were spared. It's a close thing, though. Next time, they might not be so lucky. Traditional to have your shot in front of the Castel Nuovo. You've been married. So I've 
accommodation. It's basic, but it's okay. That'll do. Air conditioned to the colour telly. And then out the window. The street below. To the right, you've got the square and Vesuvius just over here. There it is. Amazing street this, in the old historic district now of Naples. Buildings higgledy piggledy on top of each other. When I think of Naples I do think of these type of streets. Amazing streets, really narrow. And that's because it gets so hot in summer, I mean it gets stiflingly hot. So you have these narrow alleyways to keep it cool and there's washing hanging up there and people and activity. Amazing. hanging her sheets out up there, right up at the top there. smart aren't they? Always smart Italians. Wherever you are in Italy. Look at that Italian there. He thinks he's blending in. This BBC bag. What do you think? Do you think he's blending in? I know I can't blend in. Taking in the washing. It's been a nice uh, sunny day today, so it's dried nicely. So we'll just take the underwear in now. It's uh, nice and dry. Two pigeons there in the foreground. It's good, isn't it? Mobile phones are popular here as well, you'll notice. And then, in a back street, an unassuming church hides a real gem of a ceiling. statue of Dante. It makes me think of Walter Minerini and Maria Bruno. Greetings from your beautiful country. What did Dante write? Dante's Inferno. That's famous. right, yes. He influenced Shakespeare, he influenced so many writers.
Well, Naples is actually named after the Greek word Neapolis, which means new city. They're digging for a new tube line here and they're doing some archaeological digging first. Where are we going now, Mark? Well, we're off to the Archaeological Museum, it's supposed to be one of the finest in the world. young and the old, all alike coming to see this marvellous collection. It's a fantastic museum, Some stunning stuff in here. Extraordinary Greek goddess here. We're representing fertility, you can see why, because she's very fertile. Who's hiding behind that statue? Oh, come out, that shows the size. That is a big statue. Amazing, I've seen statues that size before. You can notice that the statue originally would have been coloured polychrome and red. Yeah? Yeah. If you look at the helmet, the head up there, you can still see the original colour. This is a very interesting room that uh, has been closed off in the past because of the pornographic material it contains. Let's go in and have a look.
to put above the doors really is uh, Lucky Charms, Good Luck, and this uh, has a brand in Latin. Hic Habitat Felicitas, which means here lives happiness. So that was their wish. This reminds me of our holidays in Egypt. Scenes of the Nile? Yes. The crocodile? The hippopotamus. Beautiful, isn't it? The tiny mosaic. How about this for a shopping centre? Beautiful glass dome that you can see from our hotel. Burlington Arcade on a grand scale. See that building up there, look. This reminds me of the one in Milan. Look at the floor, Mark. Mm. Mosaics on the floor. on the left there where Sorrento is and then the gap between the mainland and the Isle of Capri. The island's here. Beautiful rugged island. Look at that road up there, wow. See the traffic clinging to the cliffs.
So we're at Capri Town, which is above the harbour. We're going to spend four days here, so later on today, all these people will be gone and we'll have it all to ourselves. Hopefully that's the plan. But Capri Town is huge, as you can see. Well, actually, it's a little square. There's David. Can't miss him in that shirt, can you? Very keen on sport, the youngsters. In some football matches, they're just checking uh, the newspapers there. Everything has to come in in carts like this, you see. No cars, no Vespers, no noise. After Naples, it's so much quieter here. La 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 la. Even the scaffolding pole has to come in individually. <laughs> they have electric vehicles everywhere in Capri because there's no room for cars, which is nice, makes it nice and quiet. Very environmentally friendly. This is our hotel, Hotel Paziella. Four star. Oh, well, we've arrived at our hotel in Capri. Very nice with all these blue tiles everywhere. I like that. Lord, king size bed, blue tiles on the floor. Very nice, with a little terrace leading to the gardens. What do you think? Well look, folks, look at this. It's spacious. It'll do for four days, slumming it. Here I am in Capri watching the station that I spend most of my time broadcasting in England. BBC World, my channel. It's good to have it here. This is BBC World. News, information and inspiration. 24 hours a day. Today we're going to do a bit of walking across the uh, mountains and uh, look at the scenery up above Anna Capri. This is a bit of a bus journey, this one. It goes up right round the side of the incredibly high mountain. And it's, um, well, you say a few prayers. You wait till you see the views over the cliff edge. Capri, a few miles from Capri town, even higher up in the mountains. 
almost as busy as Capri Town. Well, you've seen the crowded Anna Capri, and this is the historic bit where a lot of those day trippers don't even get to see. You're in danger of disappearing with that shirt. Now this church has an amazing surprise inside. Yes, another stunning interior to a Baroque church. This beautiful scene was created in 1761 and the tiles depict earthly paradise. We are leaving Anna Capri behind. We're going up even higher to the high point now. It's weird, I feel like a, one of those Thunderbird puppets got strings operating me. Very strange. Just hear the birds singing, nothing else. How beautiful, do you hear that bird? Have a look at the view over this way. It's a lovely view, just over here. Let's see what we're looking at. Hello. <laughs> oh good, they have gnomes here as well. I'm glad. Oh my goodness, what a beautiful garden. I'm flying like a bird. Now I know what it's like to be a bird. And we're almost there. Right. 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 To the right. Well, oh, there's another experience. <laughs> So we're looking right down the length of the island now, back towards Capri Town, where we're staying. There's the uh, clock tower, and where we arrived on the funicular up there. We're at the other end of the island. It's only four miles long by a mile wide. Well, we're just walking back down into town now from the summit. Go and have some lunch. Buongiorno. 
Buongiorno, signor Asso. I think it's an Italian donkey. I presume he speaks Italian. I keep well away from his rear because they do tend to kick quite violently. Hello. Stanley's here again. Look. It's just like Stanley in Palm Beach. How do you say the animal in Italian? This? The name. The name? Yeah. Animal. La Sinella. La Sinella. La Sinella. Ah, sì. Angolo nome, si. Sì. Roberta. Roberta. Ah, femminile. Femminile. Ah, it's sì. una donna. Una donna. Una donna. <laughs> <laughs> The island of Capri is a walker's paradise. Miles and miles of paths going up and down the steep cliffs. And suddenly you're walking along and through the trees you glimpse this marvelous view of the coastline. And indeed the mainland of Sorrento across there. Magic. Yeah, you can just make out the arch on the right there. And then we've got a house for Stanley that's for sale. It's, uh, in Italian, it's Little Paradise Cottage and it's perched right up on the cliff. It's for sale for you, Stanley. It's a snip at a million, 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 billion lira. It's got a gorgeous garden on the left with more terraces here. And uh, just a spectacular view. That's the one. That's your true Casa Finale, Stanley with the view looking down on the Italian mainland and the coast of sparkling blue sea and just a very peaceful, beautiful spot right by the archway. This is the one. Faraglioni, that's the name of the rocks that stick out, rather like a pair of teeth, off the coast of the island. Wonderful, relaxing, just wandering along the cliff path looking at the views like this behind me. That's our lunch today. Fresh fish. Fresh fish. This looks like a nice place to stay, actually. It's about 130 pounds a night. It's a bit more than we're paying where we are. Perhaps worth it, though, for the sea views. Now, how about this for a hotel? This is one of the most expensive hotels on the island. It's about 300 pounds a night. It's called Hotel Scala Natella. It's got a swimming pool as well and a terrace overlooking the sea. This is just like Palm Beach. We've got uh, Moschino. We've got Hermes, Gucci, Dolce Gabbana. I've got to fill my belt now. My only bit of designer fashion work. We like these trousers. You've got uh, two maps of the world. Central Park. You've got the Paris Metro and the London <laughs> Underground down here. Upside down. Oh, I see that uh, yellow's in again this season. <laughs> this is the top hotel, really, the deluxe five star. those signs nice and clean even if it does mean using a pair of orange marigold gloves. Oh look at 
that, that strawberry. Strawberry, little bits of strawberry in it. Delicious. Mmm. He's really into that. I'm filming it as I eat I it, and then I can eat it twice. Oh, good idea. Well, there's Naples in the distance, uh, clearly visible today from Capri. It's our last day on this beautiful island and the weather's come up trumps. We're only going to take a little boat trip now around the island. Sorry folks, this is actually our boat. Hold on tight, it's going to be a bumpy ride. Famous blue grottos in here, but it's too windy today. So there's no boats going in, even with the calm water, it's quite difficult. It's a narrow entrance. Can you believe people go in there in a boat lying flat on their backs to see the blue light shining on the water? I think that's quite scary to think people go in there. I wouldn't want to do it. taking us right under the roll, that's quite something. Oh. We're actually in the rock now, <laughs> the boat, taking the whole boat into the rock. It's like cheese. Very good, very impressive bit of driving that. Quelli del famoso arco naturale dell'isola di Capri con un po' di fantasia la parte finale di questo arco sembra la testa di un elefante. Oh my god, we're going through the arch. Oh, bravo! Woo. Unfortunately, it's time to move on. We're going over there to the mainland. So we were on Capri, we're going north to Sorrento. From Sorrento, we go over the mountains to Positano, and over here we have Amalfi. 
So we've just arrived on this monster in Sorrento, just half an hour from Capri. The next leg of our journey begins here. So this is a whirlwind tour of Sorrento. Well, the beaches don't quite compete with the wonderful beaches of uh, Tembe. But the history's not bad, and the scenery's nice, and the weather's good. And there goes the hydrofoil for Naples. Until 1853, there actually was no coastal road to Amalfi. It was almost cut off. You had to go over the mountains. And then they blasted these tunnels through so you could get to Amalfi. So really, this coastline was a secret for quite a while. This is the reason we're here, this incredible coastline. Just look at it. There's our destination in the distance, Amalfi. Looks beautiful, doesn't it? That's where we're staying. Oh dear, we're slumming it again. Well, not really. This is the view from our bedroom during the day. It's a nice hot day today. I think it's the 9th of May now. From here, you can see the whole of the town, including the harbour. My sister Alison stayed in this hotel recently. It used to be a convent and you can only get up to it by that lift. And, funnily enough, her hotel is right by our hotel, which is here. It's a lovely breakfast terrace here overlooking the harbour. Yeah, there's Enver having his cappuccino. Nice day, isn't it? You can see why this is a good place to have breakfast. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. You have a nice cappuccino? Si, grazie. Good. I'll come and join you. Cappuccino is the way to start the day. There's David up in the church, look. He's a long way away. these famous bronze doors which were made in Constantinople in around the year 1066. Many hands have touched these handles. <laughs> Buongiorno, <laughs> Pero. <laughs> what? <laughs> you tell the Moorish influence. Do you remind you of the Arab architecture? Well, the Arab influence is always here. The Arabs are in Italy. The quiet garden on the inner courtyard. The cloister bell rings for mass.
Stanley, they've got your cherubs here, look, right up on the ceiling. Just like in your house in New Hope. There we are, exactly the same cherubs like you've got in your house, Stanley. Up the hill is a nice market. Fresh fruit, fresh lemons off the trees. Lovely peaches, beans. Look at the size of the grapefruit. Huge grapefruit. If I put my hand there, you can see they're massive. And chili peppers. It's the best advert I've ever seen for um, fish. fish shop. Yeah, lovely. It really is the most astonishing scenery. Dramatic coastline and then up this valley behind Amalfi, little hidden secrets like this. Oh, duck a la range, I'm feeling hungry now. Whoa. Stanley, these ducks, I think they've flown all the way from Philadelphia. Do you have any breadcrumbs for them? And above such secrets, terraced rows of lemons growing, lemon groves, up into the high mountains above, which go up into the clouds almost. No wonder if so many writers came here and were inspired. D.H. Lawrence wrote part of Lady Chatterley's Lover here. You can see a nice emerald grotto now. First you've got to go down from the cliff top down to the bottom and underneath the rocks is a beautiful emerald grotto, apparently. So that's the sunlight coming in under the rock. Sea water, sunlight. <laughs> Very clear. Very green, nice, nice. Feel how warm it is. Oh, it's not bad. Oh yeah, very nice. Look at that emerald colour. Bunny rabbit. Let's get a bit of it. Smart businessman getting off here at Positano. hot for suits. The thing about Positano is so little space here that the houses are literally on top of each other. Unlike a Malfi, space is at a premium. Then so are the prices of course. This is probably the most famous place in town. This is where all the people walk up and down. Shea Black, it's called. And it's all to do with 30 years ago, the owner married an Englishwoman and she liked his tan and she said he was very black and dark and tan, so she called him Mr. Black. The name stuck. And voila, we have now Shea the restaurant Black. has the name Shea Black. So it's a love story going back 30 years between the owner Italian Salvatore and his English wife. Isn't that nice? When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's amore. When the world seems to shine like you've had too much wine, that's amore. Bells will ring, tingling, ling, tingling, ling, and you'll sing the Hearts will play tippy tippy tay tippy tippy tay like a guitar and When you dance down the street with the cloud at your feet, you're in love. 
When you walk in a dream But you know you're not dreaming, senor Excuse me, but you see back in old Napoli That's amore Well, here we are, folks, with a beautiful sunset. There's Capri peeking out from the end of the uh, mainland. That's all Capri. There's the high point, in the center of the frame. On the left, there's rocks that jut out. Absolutely beautiful. And there's Positano. Some elections coming up. Oh, the good life Full of fun Seems to be the ideal I want to know, where's the old Duchess of Amalfi? Where's she then? Mm, the good life Let's you hide all the sadness you feel you won't cheers this is the life fall in love salute to everybody who watched this video i hope you enjoy and have a nice time so let's go to pompeii it's the good life to be free and explore the unknown. This is very Italian. You get two buses meeting on a corner and neither will give way and no one will reverse behind me. Stalemate on an Italian cliff top. I've read so many books, seen so many documentaries, and now at the age of 22, <clears throat> 22. 22. We're off to see this wonderful city.
After Vesuvius erupted in AD 79, Pompeii remained hidden under the ash for 1500 years, until 1594 when workmen digging a water channel rediscovered it. This is the first known Roman amphitheatre. Built in 80 BC, it seated 20,000 people. This was an ancient swimming pool. You can see the shallow and the deep end. It's in the middle of a gymnasium area and it's a vast area for exercise, instructing the young. They had lots of associations for the young. Look at this street, isn't this incredible? Look at this. This is the main street in town. I came around that corner and I couldn't believe it. So the chariots can go through and the pedestrians can walk across in safety. They should have them on the roads now. Nature's taken over inside some of the rooms. Nice house off the main drag with an inner courtyard. Looks like there might have been a little pond there, doesn't it? Do you no, know? it was to collect the rainwater. What, so the rain would come in here yeah. and come down into here? Some of the original roof left across the street, rather like the Bologna arches, bit of shade. That side of the street they haven't excavated. Have they? Oh, I see. It's only on this side of the street. Oh, yes. Look along. It's all still under the soil. We're now standing in the Basilica, one of the most important parts of the city, which was constructed about 120 BC. Oh, so it's uh, pre-Roman? Pre-Roman, yes, probably Greek. Greek-style columns, and it was the law courts as well, wasn't law it? Courts, Very important yeah. building. Mm -hmm. yeah, but these columns, Mark, originally they would have been covered in marble. Now, I know that those of you are saying, well, it's just a pile of stones. Well, that's true, but it's an extensive pile of stones. It's a miracle it survived 2,000 years. And you have to use your imagination. We can actually help you with some reconstruction pictures which show you what it would have looked like originally. This square, known as the Forum, was the heart of the ancient city. It shows you just what an extensive site it is. I mean, it's a whole town, starting with the amphitheatre. We've been up here down the main street, Via Abandonata, all the way down here to the Forum. That's about a half an hour walk. 
and really we're just touching on it in the four or five hours we're here. This chap didn't make it out of the granary, unfortunately, near the forum. It wasn't Vesuvius's initial eruption that caught people out, but the subsequent pyroclastic flow when the volcano imploded and sent out hot ash and debris at high speed down the hillside. And it was all over in only a couple of days, which is why Pompeii is such a rich find. The city was literally frozen in time. Cleanliness is next to godliness, they say. And there's certainly a large area for the baths. Inside some of the people whose bathing was rudely interrupted by the volcano. It was in 1860 that Giuseppe Fiorelli invented the ingenious system of pouring liquid plaster into the cavities left by those who had perished. Incredibly, you can see the expression on their faces and the folds in their clothes. This was a steam room. This huge marble fountain. Imagine water gushing out of that. This is the marine gate, Porta Marinara. One of the main entrances into the city. The sea originally was much nearer than it is now and would be right by that gate. Are the afternoon shifts coming on? These tour guides get younger and younger. <laughs> What you're looking at is a reconstruction of the villa of Diomedi. And this is what it looks like today. Pompeii and poppies blowing in the wind. And there's some lovely roses out. No sun of my roses in England at the moment. Too early in the season there. Must have been a beautiful city. Here is an Italian garden with amphorae. This is your genuine article. This is in the old city of Pompeii. You see the stairs to the upper level there and where the girders would have been. Not much left now of those stairs, just a few broken vases. Ancient carts did that, Madeira. Those wheels went up and down this twisting street so many times. I tell you something, Mark, it must have been extremely noisy in ancient Pompeii. I mean, there's no asphalt down, is there? Makes you think, doesn't it? Oh, he's having a few problems there. <laughs> it's not designed for modern cars at all. And he has rubber tyres. Imagine the original carts and chariots. Yeah. They didn't have rubber on them. I know. Well, this is the street of the tombs. These people were lucky enough to die before and had these beautiful marble tombs and headstones down. They must have been very wealthy. There's a ship there on one of the tombs showing what an important maritime nation they were. This villa's in very good condition. I suspect a bit of rebuilding has been going on here.
This is the Casa de Verti with some of the most famous and extensive paintings in the whole of Pompeii. Some beautiful artwork here. They vied with each other, the merchants, to have the most beautiful frescoes painted on their wall, basically to show other people just how wealthy they were. Palazzo Reale, a caserta, magnificent. You wait till you see the inside. When King Charles built his royal palace north of Naples in 1752, he wanted to surpass the one built by his great-grandfather Louis XIV at Versailles. Among the 3,000 builders were 300 master masons, 166 convicts and 245 captured Turkish pirates. How about these for some chandeliers, Stanley? Look at the size of these. Goodness, look at that ceiling. I think this is the most beautiful ceiling I've ever seen. Quite incredible. This palace actually has over a thousand rooms. And I'm sorry Versailles, but this leaves you in the shade. I mean, this has furniture, paintings, everything. Just look at it.
What do you think? Better than Versailles. Oh, it's incredible, the furniture. This is the library, Greco-Romano style. More exquisite drawings and paintings. Signs of the zodiac up there, done very pale. Now, Stanley, we like your Napoleon bed, but this is the Queen's bed here. This insignificant room is the bathroom. Fit for a king. Hot and cold running water. Freda e Calda. This extraordinary water feature designed by Naples-born architect Luigi Van Vitelli runs for over two miles from the palace to the horizon. You can go behind the waterfall. Look at this. They're way high up above Amalfi in a place called Ravello, with some beautiful gardens. And it's towards sunset and you can see the coastline down here from the gardens. His famous associations with Wagner, he composed one of his operas here. It was inspired, you can see why. I feel one of my most favorite pieces of Wagner coming on. Yes, here it comes.
late evening, our last night in this beautiful part of Italy. I have to say it has exceeded my expectations. It really is beautiful. Well folks, that's the end of our uh, trip to Italy, our grand tour of the year 2001. Hope you've had a nice time. See you soon, bye. A girl went back to Napoli Because she missed the scenery The native dances and the charming songs But wait a minute, something's wrong Mambo Italiano, eh hey, Mambo, Mambo Italiano, go, 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 you mixed up Sigiliano, all you Calabrese do the Mambo like a crazy with a, eh hey, Mambo, don't want a Tarantella, eh hey, Mambo, no more the Mozzarella, eh hey, Mambo, Mambo Italiano, try an enchilada with the fish bacala, and then a, hey, Goomba, I love how you dance a Lumba. But take some of advice, Paisano, learn how to mambo. If you're gonna be a square, you ain't gonna go nowhere. Eh, hey, mambo, mambo italiano. Eh, hey, mambo, mambo italiano. Go, go, Joe, shake like a Giovanni. Hey, look, as a DJ, you get a happy in the feet. How to mambo, Italian. Nice. <clears throat>